Dr. Mindy here, and on this video, we're gonna talk about type two diabetes symptoms and how you can bring a fasting lifestyle into a diagnosis like type two diabetes to really help you overcome that diagnosis because there's a lot you need to know about this that I'm excited to share with you. Okay, so uh, type two diabetes symptoms. So there, it's really, you're gonna be actually a little shocked at what I have to say because the symptoms have most likely been knocking at the door, at your door before you get the diagnosis. So I wanna talk about the number one symptom that nobody's talking about when it comes to type two diabetes that is a, a warning light to you. And that is your inability to go without food. So if you are unable to metabolically switch in the absence of food, if you go hangry, if you get hypoglycemic, you are, that is a metabolic inflexibility. It is a metabolic poor health. And if that stays that way long enough it, and you have a genetic pre predisposition to type two di or to diabetes in general, you're going to trigger that. So the first symptom is your inability to go out without food. The, the interesting thing on that I wanted to say is that in Fast Like a Girl, I wrote about something called the thrifty gene hypothesis, which shows that, that in the primal days, we had a genetic profile that allowed us to fast. And those cave people that were able to, to survive the harsh conditions of the cave person day, they had this genetic profile and that they believe the thrifty gene hypothesis is that we actually have that gene in all of us now. So if we're eating all day long and we're not able to go without food, we are out of balance with our genes. I was actually speaking to a group recently um, where I was saying, you know, in the cave person days, if you didn't have the genetic profile to allow you to survive without food, you would die. In the modern world, if you're, not, if you're eating all day and you have to have food all the time, you could die because you need to learn to be metabolically flexible. Now, I know that's like a, a harsh statement, but I really want to emphasize that type two diabetes is reversible. So this inability to go without food is a big elephant in the room that tells us you're heading down that path. The second symptom I want you to know is it could be something as simple as you're trying everything and you can't lose weight. That's, it may not be your fault, so can you switch in and out of sugar burner, fat burner, like I've taught you here on this channel and like I teach you in the book? So knowing how to become metabolically flexible if you're not able to eat and then and do okay with food and then fast and switch in and out of those two, that's a huge sign. The other thing I wanna talk about that's another really nuanced sign that we don't talk enough about is when you eat a meal, you go to sleep afterwards, you're sleepy. That means you're not managing blood sugar very well. So those I feel like are really three big signs. You can't go without food, you're not metabolically switching, and when you eat, you're getting sleepy and exhausted afterwards. That is the initial signs of type two diabetes if you have the genetic predisposition for it. Now, I think you all know that I've said over and over again that we've only got 12% of Americans here, I know we're a worldwide audience, that are metabolically healthy. So that means those only 12% have have said, yes, I can go without food, yes, I can switch in and out, and yes, I'm energized after a meal, only 12%. On top of that, if you have high blood pressure, if you have liver enzymes that are, are increasing, if your fasting glucose is high, your fasting insulin, your hemoglobin A1C is over five, like these are all markers, but those are more commonly talked about. So I wanted to bring to you the three that, that, that you may have not heard. So with that in mind, now let's go to the second point here, which is how do you build a fasting lifestyle for this? So the first thing I want you to know is if you've been given a diagnosis of diabetes, whether it's type one or type two, or you, your doctor said, hey, your hemoglobin A1C is really high, uh, your fasting insulin and glucose is really high, you're heading towards diabetes, 
As you build a fi fasting lifestyle, you want to bring your doctor into this picture. And if you are a doctor or a nurse practitioner or a healthcare practitioner, um, please learn the principles. I actually wrote this book for with doctors in mind, hoping they would grab it, they would they could dive into the science and they could be a partner with you on your health journey. Because we're seeing too many doctors that are saying fasting's not good, but what they don't know is that it actually is good when you do it in a strategic way like I map out here. So if you are a doctor, please dive in and get to know these principles. I just had a, a phenomenal conversation with a, a, a medical, a, a, a university hospital, and there were 100 doctors on the, on the call, and I went through the principles of fasting, and, and I was so excited to do that because we need you doctors to be in collaboration with us, especially in the category of type 2 diabetes, so that we can walk this journey together. So if you have a doctor, send them the book, send them here to the YouTube so they can see the science. But as we build this lifestyle together, I wanna make sure your doctor's on board with us. Second thing I really wanna point out is that you wanna make sure you have a glucose monitor or, and um, a ketone reader. Now, if you've been given that diagnosis, you probably already have that. But if you think you might be heading towards type two diabetes, Make sure you have a continuous glucose monitor. Make sure you understand what ketones and blood glucose mean. I explain it in the book, so it's there for you. But you want to watch as you go into the fast. Okay, and then the third thing for type 2 diabetics when building a fasting lifestyle is that I really want you to know about three key principles, food principles. And then I'm going into fasting. One is we got to swap your oils out. Make sure you're doing good oils, not bad oils. I talk about it in the book. I map them out in the, in the you, you can see all of the lists I give you there. Second principle is when you are eating carbohydrates, could you switch over to nature's carbs? They have more fiber in them. So, you know, a blueberry, an apple has a lot more fiber than a potato chip. So, or a bowl of pasta. So when you eat it, there's gonna be less of a glucose consequence. You're not gonna see your glucose levels go up as much, um, which is, is really awesome. Um, the other thing I want you to know is that, or let me go to the third one and then I'll tell you the macronutrient I want you to lean into. The third one is a concept called obesogens. And obesogens are at the root of a lot of type two diabetic situations. These are toxins that are making you insulin resistant. And there are a lot of your favorite ones. They're in your colognes you're wearing, they're in the shampoos and the lotions you're putting on. Um, so make sure you're familiar with what those obes obesogens are. And you can just Google obesogens and it'll give you a list there. So of, try to avoid those. I use something called the Think Dirty app or Skin Deep and I scan all my products. We, we're in my household committed to all natural products um, so that I, again, I don't want to bring those toxins in for a variety of reasons. So those are kind of the food principles. Now, when we go to build the fasting lifestyle, we have to look at what, what principles we need to lean into. So the first is we need to switch over as often as we can. This is your first step. I want you to just understand what it feels like to go from sugar burner to fat burner and to get ketones. So that means you just want to master the intermittent fasting step first, like 13 hours. So just get comfortable there. I have in the book a pre-reset that you can do that will, will show you a two-week journey you can do to, to help you get into this fat-burning state. So that's in the chapter called the 30-Day Fasting Reset, and it's a pre-reset. I had Hay House even put it in a little square so you guys could see it. It was easy to find, so know that that's in the book. So you're going to want to slowly work yourself into this, but we want to get you to this to this place where you can intermittent fast and get ketones easily. What I've seen with type two diabetics is sometimes it could take months for you to get to that place. Not a problem. Be slow and methodical about this and involve your doctor. It's, it, that's fine. Now, once you've learned to switch over and you know, you're like, ah, I got the rhythm of what ketones, good ketones feel like. I know that it, in the diabetic world, we freak out at the word ketones, but I'm talking about nutritional ketosis. Uh, when we're talking about ketoacidosis, those are ketones up at like 7.0, 8.0. I'm talking about 0.5 dosage matters when it comes to ketones. So we want to make sure you're in this low ketogenic nutritional state. So, that, so that's something to know there. So once you've got that mastered, where you're going is actually the longer fast. And I, I got to tell you that one of the things I've enjoyed about writing this book is really getting to know some of the fasting masters. 
And Jason Fung is in a fasting master. And uh, Megan Ramos, who's been working in her clinic, um, has become a friend of mine. And we have collaborated on uh, a lot of thoughts around fasting. And what she shared with me, and I would, I would agree with this, is that the longer fast, 36, 48, 72, when we can get you all with type 2 diabetes to start to dip into those safely, now you're going to see a big reversal of type 2. But again, we need your doctor on this path. Okay, check this out. I have a free fasting guide for you all. It's free, and it's going to teach you all the basics of fasting. It's going to teach you how to kill hunger when you fast, which is really cool, and it's going to show you how to break your fast, among many other things. All you got to do is click on this link right here and enjoy. Um, and then the last two food principles I want to make sure you know is that protein and fat will stabilize your blood sugar the best. So if you, if you really want to make a dramatic change, go get off the carbohydrates, both nature carbs and processed carbs. If you're like, ah, I'm not ready to get off carbs yet, just go to nature's carbs. But then we really want like 80% of your food every day to be coming from good fat and protein, 20% from nature's carbs if you're not going get, to get rid of nature's carbs. Otherwise, you can go all in for like a couple of weeks and just protein and fat and it'll stabilize your blood sugar mixed with intermittent fasting. It's a beautiful hack. The other hack that I have for type 2 diabetics is a fasted snack talked about a lot about that, but the research is really impressive. It shows that if they took two groups of people, one, they said, go 12 hours of fasting and stop. The second group, they said, go 14 hours of fasting, but at the 12 hour mark, eat a fasted snack. And what they found is that what the, the blood sugar differences when somebody ate a fasted snack um, and went two more hours of fasting were pretty similar with the people who just went 12 hours. So there wasn't a big difference there, but the weight loss, the people that ate a fasted snack and then fasted longer had significantly more weight loss than the people who stopped the fast early at 12 hours. So if you're type 2 diabetic and you have weight to drop and you want to go into these longer fasts, 36 hours, 48, 72, I map out six of them in the book, six different length fasts in the book, then lean in on a fasted snack. I talk about what a fasted snack is in there. I give you lists for that in the book. So know that those are, those are some of your food hacks. And then the last thing I'm going to I'm going to add on to this is that we really have to look at detox when it comes to type 2 diabetes. It's another elephant in the room that nobody's talking about. Heavy metals, specifically lead and mercury, are obesogens. And they will if you have lead, mercury, high glucose, high insulin and a genetic pre predisposition, you are you are almost guaranteed a diagnosis. So know your heavy metal load. The other piece is exercise. Exercise don't fear exercise, even if you don't want to do it. I mean, in, in the fasting world, we're so excited about what you can achieve in your body without exercise. But for the type 2 diabetic, it, exercise is, for all of us, exercise is important. But when we're really wanting to regulate blood sugar, we need to get that exercise rhythm back in. So start walking. It doesn't have to be big. Just start walking 20 minutes a day and let's start utilizing cortisol and insulin and glucose to really help prime you with this metabolic switch. I know you're struggling to lose weight. It may be your fasting length. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the perfect fasting length to unstick weight loss. In fact, it's such an incredible tool for weight loss. I think you should start with fasting before you change your food to be able to get into that door in for losing weight.